Bonjour tout le monde. Je m'appelle Adam Van Couverden. I'm the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of the Environment and Climate Change, as well as the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Sport and Physical Activity. And we're here today to talk about the Canada Carbon Rebate. Because lately, Pierre Polyev and the Conservatives have been using poverty as a wedge against fighting climate change and lowering our emissions in Canada. They keep using lines about food bank usage, which is a reality. There are real affordability issues in Canada, and we meet with affordability experts, poverty reduction strategists, food banks, and food security organizations on a frequent basis. And the thing that we haven't been hearing from them is that carbon pricing, our carbon rebate program, is causing inflation or causing the financial hardship that is facing Canadians. In order to tackle the affordability crisis in Canada right now, we need to talk to experts and we need to find out what exactly is driving that inflation and how we can get in front of it, how we can make sure that we're meeting Canadians where they are and make sure that they can afford the food that they need and the, the lives they deserve. So one of those experts we're very lucky to have with us here today, that's the founder of Generation Squeeze, UBC professor, Dr. Paul Kershaw. After Dr. Kershaw uh, uh, speaks, um, uh, my colleagues, uh, Parliamentary Secretary Julie DeBruzen and MP um, Patrick Weiler will speak afterwards. Over to you, Dr. Uh, Kershaw. Thank you very much. When you make a mess, you should help clean it up. That's a responsibility that my mom taught me. And any time that a politician courts our vote on the promise to eliminate the responsibility to pay for pollution, they are betraying that family value. We don't pay for our pollution because some consumer preference, a choice to neglect when times are tough. And we don't even pay for our pollution just because we're going to get back a bigger rebate than we'll pay for our emissions, although that is a strength of the well-designed plan that the Liberal government created. We pay for our pollution because we love our kids, grandchildren, nieces, and nephews. We have a duty to pay for our pollution for them. We want to be good ancestors, and we betray them if we don't, because there is absolutely no escaping that we put our kids' health, safety, air, drinking water, and food at risk when we pollute too much. And that is the message that we are bringing to Ottawa on behalf of Generation Squeeze. We're an alliance of 43,000, and we are pleading with all politicians to stand firm to protect the historic decision to put a price on pollution. When I hear politicians talk about eliminating the price on carbon, I can't help but think about my childhood growing up amongst divorced parents. On the rare occasions I would spend weekends with my dad, he would let me eat lots of candy and stay up late at night. And I would go home and I'd yell, Mom, why can't you be more like him when she was making me do my homework, eat my vegetables, and go to bed on time? The Axe Attacks campaign is much like the offer of candy, whereas the Liberals, like my mom, are asking us to fulfill our responsibility. Trust me, I know that the candy is appealing. Mr. Polyev isn't just offering to save us money, and he's not because the rebate is too big, but he's actually offering to make us feel less guilty. I mean, who wants to be tirelessly driving our kids to hockey and soccer and dancing and music lessons and then have to feel angst because we're driving them in a car that burns gasoline? or when we're working our butts off to keep our homes warm in the mid of the harsh Canadian winter, and then we have to worry that our furnace is burning fuel that's putting our offspring at risk. And so we respond. We respond when a national leader says, let's not worry about that from right now. And what sweet relief it is when we are left off the hook. But the promise that we cannot pay for our pollution or that pollution can be free is no more realistic than my childhood fantasy that I could live forever on candy and never go to bed on time. And that is why faculties of medicine from coast to coast, including the faculty of medicine at UBC where I teach, we are deeply aware that climate change is the greatest risk to human health in the 21st century. And some might say, but Paul, we can't afford to bear that added cost on our wallets. And I would say, you can't neglect our climate problems when we're solving our wallet problems. You solve wallet problems by having better policy reduce major costs of living like childcare, housing, post-secondary. So we're going to ask the provinces to accelerate the implementation of $10 day historically funded, and we can agree with Mr. Polyev that we need to do an end run around housing gatekeepers and NIMBYs, and we can celebrate that the accelerator fund launched by the Liberals is helping to do just that. Because yes, we do need to have home prices stall to, afford, to restore affordability for all. And in 2023, home prices did just that. So as we rein in these major costs of living, we can remember, we can remember that we don't actually have a choice to pay for our pollution or not. We have a choice to pay less now and get a rebate or burden our kids to pay more later. And later is without a doubt an abuse of the authority we wield over our kids. They cannot vote. They are counting on us to do more, not less. 
to protect them and their environment. That means reducing our smog, reducing our trash, paying for our pollution, both present and past, beyond convenience and consumerism, we all have a deep desire, a deep desire to be part of something bigger, to protect the things we hold to be sacred for our descendants, like a safe and healthy planet, a safe and healthy childhood, a healthy home. No one's gonna put on their great our tombstones. I avoided paying for my pollution, but we just might add, I did all I could to be a good ancestor. To be good ancestors, that's the quest to generation squeeze, because nobody wants to be remembered for wrecking the planet when we had one last chance to preserve it for our kids. So we hope that many, many politicians and Canadians from across the country will join us and say they agree. We pay for our pollution because we want to leave a proud legacy. Thank you. Merci. Moi, je suis Julie Dabouzin. Je suis la secrétaire parlementaire pour le ministre des Ressources naturelles. Et aujourd'hui, vraiment, je suis aussi ici, parlant étant mère, mère de deux filles, et je pense à leur futur. Je pense à leur futur et qu'est-ce qu'on va faire pour avoir un environnement sain, euh, une planète saine. On doit s'assurer qu'on fait tout ce qu'on peut faire maintenant pour assurer qu'on ne donne pas des dégâts à nos enfants. Et c'est qu'on devrait bien faire comme parents responsables à payer le prix des dégâts à l'environnement pour s'assurer que ce n'est pas nos enfants qui payent pour, ce n'est pas nos enfants qui payent pour les dégâts qu'on a fait. On a un choix aujourd'hui à être des parents responsables qui prennent soin de nos enfants et qui prennent soin de l'environnement. Et ça, c'est pourquoi aujourd'hui, quand on parle du prix sur la pollution, quand on parle de la remise de carbone, ce sont des projets responsables, étant parents, étant des gens qui veulent vraiment penser au futur des enfants. Et ça, c'est pourquoi c'est tellement important. Je vraiment veux dire merci euh, au Dr. Kershaw parce qu'il nous amène cette idée et ce message-là. Merci. Merci. And, uh uh, I'm Patrick Weiler. I'm uh, the Member of Parliament for West Vancouver, Sunshine Coast, Sea to Sky Country. And uh, I'm a British Columbian MP. And what we've seen here is that Pierre Polyev is lying to Canadians. He's lying to British Columbians. He's carrying on these acts, the tax rallies throughout BC as if the federal government could end the provincially implemented carbon tax, which has been in place since 2008. And this has not gone unnoticed. We've had our Premier call out the baloney factory, which is exactly what we're seeing in BC. And in addition to talking about axing the tax, Pierre Polyev has no plan to fight climate change. And we know that it's so critical that we move quicker on fighting climate change because the impacts are hitting BC right now. Just in the last few years, we had uh, the village of Lytton incinerated. We had 600 people killed during the heat dome. We had the most expensive weather event in Canadian history with the atmospheric rivers. We have states of emergency because of droughts. We have the worst wildfire season in Canadian history. And this year we're looking at already uh, potentially a huge drought and wildfires with 66% less snowpack than we normally see. And so this action is urgent. The carbon price is a key part of this. It's 30% of how we're going to reduce emissions, and Pierre Polyev needs to be honest with Canadians. Um, just on the confidence, maybe, maybe Adam, uh, on the confidence motion that Polyev is talking about today, kind of ramping up the pressure on his campaign to axe the tax. What, what's your reaction to, to them trying to tie this to a question of confidence in the government or in Trudeau? Our job as parliamentarians on the government side is to put forth policy that is going to help Canadians and is going to solve some of the existential challenges and issues of our time. I knocked on doors in 2019. We had a Conservative leader, the failed Conservative leader of the Conservative Party, Andrew Scheer, say that he wanted to raise emissions in Canada. He, th he said repeatedly and has since that he believes that Canada should raise our emissions. That flies in the face of all climate science. We know that climate change is real, that we have an obligation to lower our emissions, and since 2015, we have. The price on carbon is a big part of our climate plan and our carbon emissions strategy. And when you're going in the right direction, you know, you might consider some course corrections, but you don't do U-turn. And that's what Pierre Polyev wants to do. He wants to use the affordability crisis as a wedge against Canadians to convince them that climate change isn't real or it's not a priority for us. 
Look, serious governments need to have more than one ambition. Our ambition to fight for affordability is reflected through dental care, through pharmacare, through child care, through all of the innovations that we've made in the housing sector to make sure that more housing gets built in this country. We are there with experts like Dr. Paul Kershaw, meeting with poverty reduction experts, affordability researchers, food banks to ask them, you know, what are your priorities for budget 2024? How can we cont continue to be there for Canadians? How can we continue to make sure that Canadians continue having the best quality of life in the world? And we know that we're not going to get there by ignoring existential threats like climate change. Are you guys losing this argument with Canadians? There's, you know, premiers, liberal leaders in Ontario, uh, liberal premier of Newfoundland now calling for the, uh, uh, at least to stop the increase on April 1st. So, like Bonnie Crombie saying she wouldn't have a consumer carbon price. Have you guys lost this argument in the public sphere? You know, I think politics are coming into it, but Gen Squeeze led an intergenerational climate coalition to the Supreme Court when we were first de defending the constitutionality of putting a price on pollution. And the Supreme Court, our highest court in the land, affirmed that there is a consensus, both in Canada and internationally, that a price on pollution is a critical part to reducing our greenhouse gas. There is no debate about this in terms of evidence. The only debate about this is in terms of what's politically appealing in the moment. And you're right, they're putting forth today a confidence motion, but I would say to Canadians, we can't have confidence in any politician who is going to set aside the well-understood truth from a mum that if you make a mess, you need to help clean it up. When we pollute, we're making a mess. And if we don't help to clean it up now, we are going to saddle our children with even greater burdens down the road. I don't know any mom or dad who's working hard to get their kids to soccer, hockey, dance, and music lessons that wants to hurt their kids in any kind of existential way. We can reduce the pressures on our wallet, better housing policy, childcare policy, post-secondary policy, etc. does that, and then positions us to recognize it's not a choice to pay for or not to pay for our pollution. It's, all, it's only a choice to pay less now and get a rebate or burden our kids to pay more down the road. And more later is just not what parents do. We make sacrifices for our kids and our grandchildren. We don't use our authority over them to say, you know what, we're going to just neglect that we're going to ask you to clean up messes we're not willing to pay for now. I want to ask, Mr. Polyev, why are you not willing to clean up the messes that you're leaving for our kids and grandchildren? Why are you wanting to betray them that way? If that's not the first question at every press conference about acts attacks, I don't know why it's not. And I would add to that, basically, look, the only provinces in Canada that use the federal backstop are those that have not demonstrated uh, a concerted desire to lower their emissions. And in British Columbia and Quebec, we see that those provinces have demonstrated leadership on lowering emissions, and they're not subject. But we consistently see MPs from British Columbia and Quebec stand up in the, uh, from the Conservative side, you know, using the same acts the tax line, which is not just disingenuous, it's also lying to their constituents. Pierre Polyev has been consistently lying to, con to, to Canadians when he says that pricing pollution and that being a responsible steward of the environment is having a negative impact on inflation. Affordability is a top concern. I got involved in politics because I believe that we can eliminate poverty if we put our minds to it. And no poverty elimination experts in Canada are saying that we're going to achieve that goal by eliminating a price on pollution. Talk the existential issue of, of climate change, 21st century big health problem, and uh, obviously environmental problem. Um, why is it that it seems to be this assumption of what you're saying that carbon pricing is the response, is the best response to that, or, or without carbon pricing, we're going to fail to address this ex existential threat? Why is it? Why is that? I mean, there is Nobel Prize winning evidence that when pollution is free, we pollute more. And so a price on pollution is absolutely, as the Supreme Court has acknowledged, a critical part of the plan to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions and not wreck the planet further for our kids. So it's not the only thing, and that's why it's great that we have a federal government that's thinking about incentivizing electric vehicles, it's thinking about how we make a transition to solar and to wind, et cetera, while also gradually transitioning and supporting our fossil fuel industries right now. They are walking a, tar a, a hard tightrope. But at the end of the day, affordability absolutely matters. But we are lying to one another if we think that the price on pollution is what's causing unaffordability. There's great research from the University of Calgary, which has shown that the price on pollution at most is adding less than 1% to our food and our energy costs and so on. So if you're hoping that once we end the price on pollution that somehow the affordability pressures go away, we are dreaming just like I was as a child that I can live with candy and never go to bed. If we want affordability, we need better housing policy. 
We need better child care policy, which this party is delivering, and we need our provinces to step up more. We need to get it right for young and old alike. But that doesn't mean neglecting the generational fairness principle that we need to be good stewards of things that we hold to be sacred. And I think our air, our water, our forests, our soil are sacred things that our kids are counting on for their health and for their economy. And I don't know any parent that really wants to put that in jeopardy. And I know I'm hogging the mic, but let me say one more thing. It is a dreadful thing to be a young adult today when hard work isn't paying off like it used to because we've allowed home, over the last many decades, home prices to rise beyond what people are earning when they're entering the market. And then suddenly you're feeling that, that pinch and somehow you're like, my goodness, it's hard to manage my affordability and my climate goals. And the thing that I find so vexing, but it's also intoxicating about what Mr. Pollyett is doing, is he's saying, oh, I can relieve that pressure on you. Don't worry about your pollution. But that is not a realistic promise. Pollution is chemistry. Pollution is biology. Pollution is physics. It's not going to go away if a politician promises it put to. And so we have to recognize that those changes, as Patrick said, in my province, fires are still burning in the winter. We are short on water now, and summer hasn't started. There are kids who now dread summertime because that's the time of so much smoke. Summertime was my favorite time. How are we killing summer for kids? I want to know why Mr. Polyev is open to killing summer for kids. Don't betray our kids any longer. Pricing pollution has to be part of a reasonable plan. It was for the Conservatives not that long ago when we had the consensus. It needs to be again. Thank you. All right, thanks, Cassie.